and tactical doctor was the same. Many of the uniforms were the same. In fact, here at First Manassas, much of what you would see, much of the confusion was caused because many southern sympathizing organizations were wearing blue uniforms, and many uh, northern New York units were wearing gray. And many different colors of the rainbow would be your brother standing to your left or your right. You're standing there with a bayonet, with the same type of musket they do, and all of a sudden you see these people on the other side of the field with that sharp drill sending that professional message. What's going through your mind? Hopefully, if the trick works right, we're sending a message, we're a little bit better than you are. And all it takes, one private in the ranks on the other side, to say, maybe they are. Maybe their discipline is a little bit better than mine. Maybe their resolve is a little bit better than mine. And all of a sudden, you put a crack in that human wall. Once that crack's there, you've opened the dam, and that's what won and lost battle. Hello. Hey. Now you're probably wondering, like see, just like the drill and ceremony today, everything was done for this precision. Imagine now as close these Marines are, 14 inches back to chest, shoulder to shoulder, standing in ranks, while the enemy's firing up. Discipline was necessary. Precision oh, moments. Imagine these Marines and these militiamen, any of these troops out here, without proper training, trying to load these muskets on their own without doing precise movements. They'd literally be beating each other to death just trying to get their weapon loaded. So every movement as they loaded the weapon was precise. Once the weapons were loaded, everything was done by the command. Modern relevance again. We think of the machine gun as a new development. But the concept of sending mass fire downrange was not new. During the time of the American Civil War, much of the devastating fire was done through what was known as volley fire. That is literally... Fire! We've just created a machine gun. Instead of one man putting 100 rounds down range, you have 100 men doing the same thing, just putting 100 rounds down range. The idea being not to shoot individual targets, but now putting mass lead to break a hole in that human wall. This basic concept can be modified in several different ways. It can be done in what was known as filing by files, so it can keep a constant rolling fire, firing by ranks, or whatever necessary by the officer in charge to determine that's going to be best used in the offense and the defense to protect his organization. Now, what was interesting about these Marines, to tell you a little anecdotal story, that was very poignant to all the troops that fought here at First Manassas. Imagine yourself, modern rock, those of you that may have served in the military, especially those that have served in the United States Marine Corps, imagine yourself showing up at Paris Island standing on the yellow footprint, right, right. getting ready to start recruit hey. training, and all of a sudden somebody handed you a uh, wow. M16 and told you, Whoa. you're on an airplane heading for Afghanistan. Right. You haven't been trained. Well, the time, the size of the Marine Corps at the beginning of the American Civil War was just a little over 1,500 Marines. With the beginning of the war, we were sort of expanding the Navy to blockade Southern Port. So we increased the size of the Marine Corps. Congress authorized the raising the Marine Corps to a little under 3,000. Most of the experienced Marines were now deployed aboard ship. Those Marines that were sent as Manassas, like oh, many of the militia units, were hey. in training at Marines Barracks, Washington. Fire. The 336 Marines that were there. Once that was built into them, eventually they would get to the point where the Maryland command load would be given. They would each go through the motions without knocking each other open and as quickly, effectively as possible, load the musket. The more rapid, the more discipline they showed in doing this, the more effective they would be. It was not about the technology, not any more than it is today. It was about the human element and how effective they were in applying that technology how disciplined they were, and how strong their resolve was. Battalion! Face by the rear rank! Face by the rear rank? Now, now they start to go through these various firing movements. You can imagine now, as I said, being on the line, the opposite of these men. They've got bright uniforms on. Again, you may have a very similar uniform on, but your ideals, what you're looking for in fighting for is different from them. You have the same basic type of musket. You have that bayonet effect. effect. Literally, as a militiaman, uh, uh, like that, uh, you, you may very well be standing right next to your neighbors in the ranks. You, you may be standing next to a relative in the ranks. It was, in fact, that type of civil war. 
Uh, I like that. that. You, you were standing, standing there. But before they even came to musket fire, a technique that we've learned still used today, today. It was not about the technology, something today that you'll all recognize called psychological warfare. That uniform, bright as it is, would not be practical today. But if you know you're going to be seen, you imagine these men facing you coming out on the field. They're 300, 400 yards away. Imagine all the way across this field. They're really not in musket range yet. But you see in the distance, all moving is one. They're brass gleaming in the light. They're moving, snap and pop and drill. They're bayonets gleaming in the sun. And you or somebody in your ranks are looking at them as they start to move before you, before the first shot is ever fired. There's a little owl on their head saying, you know, they might be a little bit better than they are. They might be a little bit more disciplined. And all it takes is one to say, maybe I'm not as good as they are. And that puts that crack in your human wall. And essentially that would call the day. At this battle for the Onassis, you saw this type of operation time and again. First Union forces, then Confederate forces, using these technologies, technology and using this psychological warfare to literally change the course of battle. Fire! As you can see, again, modern relevance. We talk about machine guns. I like that something fairly new. But what you just saw, was the first vestiges of a machine gun. gun. Instead of one man putting a hundred rounds down in range, you now have a hundred men at a single command putting a hundred rounds down in range. The same type of devastating effect. Again with the idea of being able to put the hole in their human wall.